Dear student teachers, welcome back to your course Knowledge and Curriculum, the last module of the first unit to concept of knowledge which deals with the process of knowledge construction. This is Dr. V. Girija, Professor and Head School of Education, Bayes Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies. The prerequisite of this module is the solid foundation in critical thinking, ability to connect and integrate new information with the existing knowledge. The objective of this module is to empower individuals to actively build and apply their understanding of concepts. The process of knowledge construction. Knowledge construction requires some levels of combination of interpretation, analysis, synthesis and evaluation. When an activity requires students to devise procedures, the activity qualifies as knowledge construction. According to David Berlow, Education needs to be geared toward the handling of data rather than the accumulation of data. Marvin Minsky says, you don't understand anything until you learn it in more than one way. Students construct their knowledge when they apply critical thinking and applied thinking to go beyond knowledge reproduction by generating ideas and understanding that are new to them. Many have referred to the modern world economy as a knowledge economy in which the possession of knowledge is far less important than the creative uses of knowledge. In this knowledge economy, the development of a new knowledge is the greatest driver of innovation. In the context of a school, the knowledge construction process relates to the extent to which teachers help students to understand, investigate and determine how to implicit cultural assumptions, frames of references and perspective perspectives and biases within the discipline influence the ways in which knowledge is constructed. Knowledge construction cannot be achieved when students merely reproduce what they have learnt already. If the knowledge construction is a process by which students generate ideas and understanding, the focus of classroom instruction should be on helping students to learn, experience this process as interdisciplinary activities provide greater scope for knowledge and knowledge construction. Three processes that are singled out as crucial to constructing knowledge is the activation of uh, existing knowledge and activating knowledge re refers to making it explicit and accessible to all stakeholders. Both users and developers of knowledge benefit from activation. Communication between stakeholders. This consists of creating a shared understanding uh, through uh, interaction among people. It is a social activity in which all participate and contribute to knowledge construction. Third one is envisioning. It is envisioning. It is a constructive process in the sense that it is based on prior understanding but extends towards the future. It is different from the activation because it builds new understandings rather than surfacing existing ones. So the three processes that are crucial for to constructing knowledge is activation of the existing knowledge, communication between the stakeholders and envisioning the uh, constructive process. All these three processes are very important in constructing the knowledge. The recent thinking about knowledge about construction assumes that knowledge is not something which can be transmitted from one person to another but rather is jointly constructed by all parties involved in the process of knowledge construction. Constructivism is a theory based on observation, scientific study and about how people learn. According to this theory, people construct their own understanding and knowledge of the world through experiencing different things, uh, experiencing things and reflecting on those experiences. Teacher's role in construction of knowledge. Teachers help learner to chart the course of learning by laying down specific learning objectives and expecting learning outcomes and the teacher should interrelate concepts, subjects and activities across the curriculum so that what is learned in one activity gets strengthened and reaffirmed in another. There is a close relation between the knower and the known as both together contribute to the transmission and construction of knowledge. Knowledge creation involves systemization of various facts through dynamic interaction between individuals and the environment. The capability to increase and utilize the knowledge is considered most advantageous to an individual. 
The process of knowing is a personalized individual task that is influenced by experience and non-intentional contextual cues. The three aspects of knowledge is very important. The three aspects that are involved in the knowledge perspective is the knower, the known and the process of knowing. The knower is the subject or the participant. The known, the field of study in which the knowledge is we are dealt with. And the third one is the process of knowing which connects the knower and the known. Modern education focuses only on the known that is the field of study and excludes the other two that is the knower and the process of knowing of the knowledge. For example, a teacher teaches about velocity to the students. Here, who is the knower? The student. Who is known? The field. It is the, about the velocity. And how are these connected? All these um, is connected through the teaching process. So, the gaining knowledge and uniting uh, knower and known through the process of knowing the process knower and the process known. The student of there is a knowing and the subject matter. The senses, perception and sensory knowledge of concrete objects. Mind, thought and knowledge of relationships. Intellect, analysis and synthesis and rational of and abstract knowing. The level of awareness of the knower determines the corresponding process of knowing as well as the nature of the knowledge gained. The knower and the known are united on the ground of transcendental consciousness. The knowledge from school and out of school. The students gain knowledge from school as well as from out of school. Let us look into the knowledges that uh, knowledge that is gained in school. No, school knowledge is provided in schools or through schools. Knowledge here is gained only for the specified educational period. Here, age is considered in the educational period and here in the school knowledge, knowledge is formal experience. In the school knowledge, it is prescribed it is from the prescribed books and school knowledge uh, uh, tests and exams are employed to assess the achievement of learners and here uh, in the school knowledge, elaborate and planned activities are organized. Whereas in the out of school knowledge, knowledge is acquired through family play groups, elders and neighbors and knowledge is gained from birth to death. There is no age restriction and the experience is informal and life events are textbooks and life progress is the examination and short activities are engaged in the out of school uh, knowledge. Let us look into the views of Mahatma Gandhi on education, knowledge and curriculum. Let us look into the definition of Mahatma Gandhi on education. Educa according to Mahatma Gandhi, education is the all-round drawing out of the best in child, man, body, mind and spirit. Education is not making everyone literate but development of intellectual and spiritual man. According to him, curriculum should be like this. Gandhi advocated a complete overhauling of the curriculum. He proposed that education should be related to the environment of the child. Our emphasis should be upon all those subjects which concern our own country, our people, our life, our physical and social environment. In curriculum, importance should be given to practical work that is learning by doing and activities will lead not only to knowledge but also to mental changes. Characteristics of basic education. Free and compulsory education should be given to all children for a period of 7 years and medium of instruction should be by mother tongue. Education should be based on the principle of learning by doing and learning by earning. Education should be self-supporting to some extent and the process of education should be centered around some form of manual production work in the form of craft. Views of Rabindranath uh, Tagore on education, knowledge and curriculum. Rabindranath Tagore was popularly known as Gurudeva and was one of the greatest prophets of educational renaissance in modern India. He was a naturalist and humanitarian and education is, according to him, is a continuous process. Education means enabling the mind to find out the ultimate truth which manipulates us from the bondage of the dust and gives us the wealth not of things but of inner light. 
not of power but of love making its own and giving expressions to it according to tagore the highest education is that which doesn't merely gives us information but makes our life in harmony with all existence according to tagore curriculum must be emphasized on religious education women education vocational education national education and mass education tagore wants child to learn from direct sources from life as a society according to him curriculum should not be narrow but should be structured with future perspectives science should be the basic part of curriculum and the development of all aspects of a child such as physical intellectual social economic moral aesthetic and spiritual should be in the curriculum co-curricular activities and contents which prepare a child to the feelings of national and international should be given a place in the curriculum tagu's contribution can be seen through the institution he started uh, known as shantiniketan or abode of peace here the atmosphere of joy and freedom love peace sympathy nobleness and nobleness of spirit was emphasized in this school there was homely environment the school was run under the shadows of trees admission was open for both girls and boys teachers students lived together in later years his school shantini ketan was expanded to international university and renamed as vishwabharati it is a public central university let us now look into arabindo on education knowledge and curriculum the concept of concept of education according to arabindo education should be in accordance with the needs of our real modern life he writes education should be true to true must not be machine made fabric but a true building or living evocation of the powers of the mind and spirit of human being education means giving creativity to inner powers developing the mind and soul intelligence in a child shri arbindo's concept of education is not only acquiring information but acquiring various kinds of information education does not uh, education means not teaching not suggesting but motivating a child to develop according to his nature according to arbindo curriculum uh, curriculum according to arbindo he prescribed a free environment for a child to develop all his faculties to the maximum and suggested that all subjects and activities should possess elements of creativity and educational expression he wished to infuse a new life and spirit into each subject and activity through which the development of a superhuman being could become possible moral and religious education should be compulsory in school education education should have religious foundation instead of blind prejudiced traditions and customs to develop scientific thoughts curriculum construction according to arabido curriculum should be in such a way that a file child finds as interesting it should include subjects which promote mental and spiritual development it should motivate children towards the attainment of knowledge the whole world of the whole world it should motivate children towards the attainment of knowledge of the whole world and it should contain creativity of life and constructive capacities on the basis of the above principles arbindo prescribed the following subjects in the curriculum for different stages of education arbindo's different stages of uh, education his advocation on curriculum construction at primary stage mother tongue english french literature national history art painting general science social science and arithmetic should be given at primary stage at secondary stage much focus should be given on mother tongue english french literature arithmetic art chemistry physics botany philosophy health education and social studies at vocational level he insisted on giving uh, much focus on art painting photography sculpture drawing cottage industries nursing and mechanical and electrical engineering and three important aspects to be considered in curriculum according to arbindo or education in mother tongue of the child training the sense organs to be developed understanding and knowledge 
and helping in developing logical attitude and scientific intelligence. Views of J. Krishnamurti on Education, Knowledge and Curriculum J. Krishnamurti is globally regarded as one of the greatest thinkers and religious teachers of all time. He was a philosopher, speaker, writer and an educationist. As a philosopher, Krishnamurti looked at education as the ultimate basis of all learning in, in the innermost workings of the human, kind, human mind. According to him, education is preparation of the whole life. He advocated holistic education. Education in the true sense is helping an individual to be mature and free, to flower greatly his love and goodness. That is what we should be interested in and not in shaping the child according to some idealistic pattern. Education is important for changes in the mind of man and giving birth to culture. According to Krishnamurti, education is to help us from childhood not to imitate anybody but to be ourselves all the time. Krishnamurti's views on knowledge Concept of knowledge according to Krishnamurti Thought is born of experience and knowledge which are inseparable from time and the past. Learning is not the accumulation of knowledge. Learning is movement from moment to moment. Without knowledge, love, the acquisition of knowledge only increases confusion and leads to self-destruction. Not to know is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge about yourself binds, ties you down. There is no freedom to move and you act and move within the limits of that knowledge. Learning is active, present and knowledge is the past. Knowledge is static, more can be added to it or taken away from it. Knowledge is of three types such as scientific knowledge, individual knowledge and collective knowledge. Scientific knowledge is from genetics, biology, geography etc. And individual knowledge comes from personal experiences and collective knowledge from ancestors and society and intelligence uses knowledge. Krishnamurti did not expound any philosophy or religion but rather talked of the things that concern us in our everyday lives, of the problems in modern society. He explained with great precision the subtle workings of the human mind and pointed to the need for bringing out bringing to our daily life a deeply meditative and spiritual quality. Integral learning was his major contribution. On uh, looking into the views of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, Arbindo, uh, J. Krishnamurti and Abhidranath Tagore, let us now move on to look into the characteristics of integral learning. Integral learning provides integrated experience and also freedom from ready-made ideas and development of a free and mature human being and right understanding of the environment. The characteristic of integral learning develops an international understanding which is a very, um, which is the need of the hour. Integral learning enables the learners to develop capacities to face challenges and integral learning the, uh, develops the self-knowledge and importance not to the system and as long as individuals doesn't understand the total process of himself, no system can bring order and peace to the world.